All right, so when you're using Google Sheets, every piece of data that you put into a cell has a data type. You may not even think about these as you use a spreadsheet, but understanding what they are and how they work will help you to build more powerful formulas and understand what's happening when something goes wrong. So the first data type that there is is just a number. So this one's pretty easy to understand, right? And we'll just do a simple example. We'll say uh, 25. And when I put that into the cell and hit enter, you see it automatically shifts to the right. That's what Google Sheets does when you enter a number. And the next one that we'll do to see the different type of alignment is just enter some text. Let's just say box. And you'll see that this is just a string of characters. There are no numbers in here and it automatically shifted to the left. So that's your first hint as to the data type is the alignment that Google Sheets gives it. So let's just go to the next one for now and it's called Boleyn. And that's just either true or false. So you, a lot of times you'll have a function, let's say an if function that outputs uh, one of two values. If the if statement is true, it'll say true. If not, it'll say false. Those outputs align to the middle by default. And the same thing will happen with errors. So let's just do a uh, quick math problem here that isn't solvable. So three divided by zero gives you a divided by zero error. Errors are their own data type. So we'll leave that there for now. And the next two aren't as common, uh, but they are technically data types. So we'll touch on them briefly here. The array by its nature is a set of multiple values, so it's kind of difficult to show it in one cell. So what we will do is we're going to skip straight into the type function and we'll input it directly into that. So we will uh, do the parentheses, but then what you need to remember is the curly brace and that tells sheets that you're getting ready to put in an array and we'll just keep our short. We'll have a value of two, we'll do a comma, and then we'll do a four. So we have two values going into this array. And I used spreadsheets for 20 years before I ran into arrays where it's a kind of a very complicated way to go about something. So I wouldn't worry too much about running into arrays, but they are one of the six data types. So I did want to put them in this tutorial to keep it complete. If I hit enter on that, it fills with a 64 and a 64 is a data type for an array. So if you need to identify one, that's how you do it but let's touch on the last data type, which is just a catch-all. So it's other, so something that doesn't fit into these other categories. An example of this would just be an image. All right, so we'll go to insert and we will find an image. I'll just pick one out of Google Drive. We'll do that one. We'll triangle like a play button. All right, we'll talk about how we can tell what types of data these are. We already talked about the alignment, but that doesn't always apply, especially if someone goes in here and overrides it just by setting their own alignment. So I could center align these values and they'll all line up in the middle. So you lose that hint. So the next way to do it is with a function called type and the outputs will be a one, two, for et cetera, as you see here, and those correspond to each data type. So I'll move this one over to give us a little bit of room. And if you use the type function, so it's pretty easy to use. You just use the word type, parentheses, point it at what you want to evaluate, and close it off. You're done, and it will tell you that 25 is a number, word box is text, et cetera. And this is why I already showed you the type function with the array data type, because of the way that this turned out, it didn't really make sense to show it with the type function. So now that we've gone over each data type and we've talked about how to identify them, let's dive into the details a little bit more and we'll start with a number data type. That's by far the most nuanced because when you have a number, you can format it in different ways. So it will stay as the same data type, but the formatting can change. So to get a sneak peek at the formatting, we'll go to uh, the format menu, hover over number, and this plain text is for text. I don't know why it's under number, but we'll skip over that for now. And we'll talk about these uh, three selections, number, percent, scientific. We'll lump all four of the currency together, and then the date and times we'll talk about as well as their own section, but these are all the number data type.
So you can put in one number and change it to any of these text formats and it won't change the data type. All right, so that's important to understand the, inter the interplay between data types and formatting. So these are all numbers, but we'll talk about the number formatting first. All right, and there's several examples here and they're each designed to show you something different. So the base formatting of the number the number format is that it adds a thousand separator in two decimal places. Okay, and if you do a negative, that just puts the negative symbol in front of the number, so that's pretty easy. If you have more than two decimal places, so this is 0 0.025, it will show a rounded number, but underneath it will still keep the data value. So this is important to understand. This 0 0.03, if I come over into cell F34 and I double click, it's still the full value. You're just seeing it rounded. Last one to look at is percents, which we'll dive into more next, but if you format them as a number, it still keeps the same value, but it shows it as a decimal. So 0 0.12 is mathematically the same as 12%. All right, so we'll look at this formatting menu. What we just talked about was number. It gives you a little preview there. Uh, and the next one is percent. So we will scroll down. And this is a series of numbers on the left with automatic formatting. So I don't think we've talked about the, that yet. What that means is I just type them in and didn't apply any formatting. Google Sheets looked at it, guessed it was a number, and this is the formatting that it applied. It basically left it alone. If you go to format and number, automatic is checked. But what we'll do to each of these is we'll change them to percent. Okay, so that's what we did in column F. Then it changes the display, but doesn't change the value, right? So one is equal to 100%. And I put some other examples on here just to show the rounding. That 487 here is changed to 49, but the value is still underneath. All right, if you wanna be sure that 100% is equal to one, you could just do uh, D48 plus F48. I would expect to get a two, and that's what you get. Now here it happens to be formatted as a percent. So let's go to format, we'll go to number and just change it to number. There you go, it's a two. Thought you had me for a second there. And the next example to talk about is scientific numbers. And again, on the left-hand side are the automatically formatted numbers. So these are just typed in, but it made some of them very large or pretty small. So talk about what this does. Let's use this uh, large number as an example. What scientific notation does is it follows three rules. And I'll go to sheetshelp.com to show these rules. Here's a number example. We're saying this is the coefficient. So the absolute value of it needs to be between one and 10. And the base will be 10 and then taken by an exponent. So this is equivalent to 4.55 times 10 to the seventh power. Let's go back to our spreadsheet and talk about that. This comes to 1.00. So saying take one times 10 to the seventh power. Similar thing happens to a negative number. So this gets turned into negative 4.55 times 10 to the 12th power. All right, so it can also work for very small numbers and the exponent in this case just gets turned into a negative. And again, this is formatting, not a data type. So when I double click in here, the number is still intact underneath in its original form. And the next data type to talk about is currency. And there's four different types of currency. All four of them are shown in this top table. So you have accounting, which shifts the dollar sign all the way over to the left of the cell. So if the cell were to get wider, the space in between the dollar sign and the numbers will get larger, but the dollar sign would stay on the left, numbers on the right. Financial takes dollar sign off and currency formatting puts the dollar sign next to the amount. Currency rounded is pretty self-explanatory. Well, we'll come down here to accounting and let's notice one important thing with the accounting format is that it aligns these numbers on the decimal place. All right, so when a number is negative, it uses parentheses instead of a negative sign, but it remains lined up because if you look at the 12.48 and the positive amount, it put a little bit of space to the right of it to make up for the space this parentheses takes up, so the positives are aligned with the negatives. This looks nice when you have a column of numbers on say a balance sheet or an income statement. You can compare them easier when they're aligned. If you look at the financial formatting, it's a little bit harder to look at the flow. All right, and one last thing while you're on here, if you want a different currency, 
Your should automatically come in if your spreadsheet settings are set to the right country. So check that first. But if you're in one country and you just want to use another country's currency, you can go to number, scroll down, custom currency, and just change it here. So let's say we want to go with another denomination here. Let's just pick Cambodia's money, click apply, and it changes the currency symbol. We'll undo that, come down here. And the last number type that we're going to cover, complex enough that it's its own subject matter, I'll link to another video about how dates and times work in a spreadsheet. But we do have a few examples here to cover. So this is how I type the value into a cell. I actually typed it long form. I said at first, January 25th, comma, 2000, 2022. And before I press enter, it looks like I'm typing in a text value, but Sheets is smart enough to recognize that that's a date. And you can tell that because it shifted it over to the right. Another way to tell that is if I run the good old type function that we were talking about earlier and it returns a one. All right, so that is formatted as a date. We can also add a time on the end. So let's say 3.15 PM, that's a date and a time. And you can display that just as a time or just as a date by controlling it with these options. So they're somewhat self-explanatory, right? If I set that back to date, it will take the time off. Let's do time, it should take the date off. And there we go. So that date still exists. And if we change this to a number, you're going to see something interesting is that January 25th, 2022 is actually 4,586 days after the time when Google Sheets decided to start counting days, which is December 31st, 1899. All right, the next data type to talk about is text. So text is obviously not a number. It's going to return a two if you run the type function on it. And if you just type in a word, so I did that in D118, it will shift it to the left and it knows that's text. So if I come over here and I apply plain text formatting to it, it looks the exact same. So that same thing happened with this next example. And I have this here to show that it can be more than just letters, right? So this is an address starts with the number 100, but the words after it convert it into text, right? That's not a number. You can't put that into a function and add or multiply with it. So it still recognizes text. If you type a number with letters instead of numbers, still text. So the last example is one that can morph in between the two. So this one is a little bit confusing, but we're going to say that we want to label something 00125. So by using the word label, what that indicates is this is not a number. This is really just a label that happens to be a number. So I'm going to put the type function over here as we work to show that right now that type is a one, which means that it's a number. All right, so we'll add those two leading zeros. They go away because it thinks it's a number. So what you need to do, go to format, uh, change that to plain text. It will shift it to the left and then you can see it changed it in the text. So that data type fundamentally changed by changing the format. And now it will let me add the two zeros. Now, interestingly enough, if I uh, start a formula and I take that 125 and I add one to it, it will still work. Why? I don't know. So plain text is pretty self-explanatory until you get into the murky waters of making a number act like text because it can bounce back and forth. So let's get rid of this example and briefly talk about Boolean values. We'll go back up in our example spreadsheet and you remember those were true and false. And the one additional thing I just wanted to touch on, we'll just put it right here, is that another representation of a Boolean value, even though they're just true or false, is a checkbox. Okay, so this is true and unchecked as false. We'll run the data type function on that. We'll put it right here. We'll reference it to D124 and enter. Returns a four because that's Boolean. So that wraps up the data types. Thanks for watching this video. And if you want to see more just like it, please subscribe to my channel in the lower right hand corner.
Thanks. It's nice to have you along.